Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Morgan. I consider myself to be a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And for today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of the new eyeshadow palettes that I tried in the month of May. Now normally I try to get this type of video up around the middle of the following month just so the palettes that I tried later in the month, I still have some more time to try them. However, I've been really... <laughs> really pushing it and I've been uploading these videos like at the end of the next month so I'm determined to get this video up at a reasonable time. I'm filming this on June 5th so hopefully I can get it up at a good time. So the month of May I tried a total of nine eyeshadow palettes that's a pretty relaxed month for me. Normally, I definitely try over 10. And I have to say, every single eyeshadow palette that I tried this month was pretty good. So even the lower ranking palettes, they still have very good quality. Overall, this month, I'm taking a look down at my desk. All of the palettes were very good quality, so quality really isn't an issue. So a lot of this is going to have to do with color, story, and preference. So just prepare yourself for that. We are going to start off at number 9, which is a Chanel eyeshadow palette, which is very unfortunate because <laughs> very expensive. But I am putting the Chanel Le Beige eyeshadow palette in the shade Tender at last place spot for this month. Now, love the packaging and if you've been following along with me, you know I've been trying out Chanel, trying to get to know their formulas. So I picked up both of the eyeshadow palettes that came out in the Le Beige collection and I have no prior experience really with Chanel eyeshadow palettes, just a few of the palettes I've tried it for my mom. So I have the shade Tender, which as you can see is a pinky shade, and the quality on this is good. The colors are blendable. It's a sophisticated, chic palette. It's an easy way to get a pink eyeshadow look, but I definitely think it is overpriced for my collection because I think immediately of Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palettes, and Charlotte Tilbury has a billion and one eyeshadow palettes that are that pinky kind of color story. And to be quite honest, I prefer the Charlotte Tilbury formula. So for me, I'm much more inclined to dig into my Pillow Talk eyeshadow palette rather than this. So for that reason, this ranks at number 9. It just wasn't something that I felt really inspired by or in love with. I just kind of was like, eh with it you know I couldn't say it was bad quality but it's not something that I am desperately trying to reach for in my everyday routine so for me that is why this ranks number nine however if you like Chanel you like pink eyeshadows I do think it's a very pretty palette moving on to number eight I mean I really wasn't even sure that I wanted to put this one in my rankings because to be frank it's just not made for my skin tone, but I just thought I'd put it in here anyways. This is a Charlotte Tilbury Instant Look of Love in a palette in the shade Glowing Beauty. So she came out with two palettes, and I will talk about the other palette later on in this video, but this one is a deeper palette. Now, when I reviewed this, I also compared it to the lighter palettes, and these shades still do work for me, but... The other palette just works so much better for my skin tone that I haven't been inclined to reach for this at all. My mom has a medium skin tone, so I ended up actually just giving this to her. So if you have my skin tone, you can definitely make this work. And I know some of you commented that you actually preferred the shades in here. For me, they're just a bit too vampy and deep for my skin tone. I feel like I have to use too light of a hand. So I did just end up giving this one away. Now I do love both of these palettes and depending on whatever your preferences are, I do highly recommend them. The quality is great. The variation and shades in here are great. I just, I love, 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 love this palette. But this particular color story is not one that I would grab for for every day, which is why this is number eight. But I don't really have much negative to say about this palette. <clears throat> Let's move on to number seven. This was a highly anticipated palette, but unfortunately, it's just not my favorite. So this is the Natasha Denona Zendo palette. It's inspired by the four elements, earth, water, air, fire. And if you watch my review, and then I also came back with this secondary three looks, one palette video, I'm just not as moved by this palette. Now, the quality in here is still good, but it's not what I look for in a Natasha Denona palette. I love Natasha's glitters, heavy metallics, very shimmery shades, and none of that is in this palette. It's just a 
subdued kind of palette. The shimmers were a little bit underwhelming. The blue shadows over here I thought were a touch harder to work with. And most importantly, this color story really doesn't inspire me. I found it hard to create a cohesive look when I tried to dig into both sides of the palette. The only way that I created looks that I actually really enjoyed was when I stuck to a certain part of the palette and when I look at the color story of a palette I love when I feel like all of the shades work together no matter what and I just don't feel like that with this palette overall I mean it's kind of a disappointment to me I think at the end of the day the quality is still very nice uh, those of you who do not like really shimmery metallic shades specifically mature skin I know a lot of those with mature skin don't love that then this actually really might be the palette for you but as far as me and my preferences it just didn't work out for me like I hoped that it would and don't get your feelings hurt I still absolutely love Natasha Denise but if I'm comparing this to a lot of my other Natasha Denona palettes, I'm just not as moved by this one. Let's move on to number six. Now this is an older palette. It has sat in my drawer of palettes to try for months. I bought this over the holidays and I don't know what inspired me, but on my birthday, I pulled out this palette. So this is the Juvia's Place Wahala 2 palette. And I'm not super well versed in Juvia's Place palettes and their formulas, but they definitely always have very inspiring color stories. Take a look at this one. Oh my goodness, it is so colorful. Now this is a Wahala 2. There is also a Wahala 1. And I've been really dying to try this but I just had, didn't have free time to try this out because of all the other new palettes that I'm more obligated to try out but for my birthday I was like I'm gonna use a palette that I've been really wanting to use and I chose this one so there are pros and cons to this palette overall generally speaking this is $40 full priced but I think you can get it on sale I'll take a look uh, right now last I checked it is only available on the Juvia's Place website it used to be available on Ulta but I mean it's not anymore <laughs> I don't know the amazing things about this palette that really stand out for the price is they played around with shimmer formulas that most affordable makeup brands won't even touch the shimmers in here absolutely incredible the textures in here incredible there is even like a duo multi-chrome shade in here there's a couple other duo chromes as well the shimmers just show up so vividly on the skin i've gotten some insane looks with this palette i think i've used it three times now the downside to this palette and why it is ranking kind of lowish on the lower half is because it's not a color story that i feel really comfortable grabbing for on an everyday base basis the colors they're very, very out there. All of the looks that I created were kind of a little bit more crazy. At the end of the day, even though I do a lot of colorful looks for you guys, I'm still like a neutral glam kind of girl. You know, I still like a toned down color story. And this is not that, which it's fine. It's not the palette. It's me. But yeah, it, I just... I stay in my house when I wear this palette for the most part, uh, but there are some incredible shimmers in here. I will say though, the mattes are not my favorite. I did find them to take a little bit of extra effort to blend out and to build up. So I'm not crazy about the mattes in here, but they're definitely workable. And for the price, you know, the mattes are just fine, but what makes this palette stand out are the shimmer colors. So if you are into colorful eyeshadows you're looking for a nice array of very good textures for an affordable price i do recommend this i've been really using this a lot because i've been trying to make it work because the textures in here are so amazing let's move on to number five and now we're getting up to palettes that i have absolutely loved 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 this month so we have the kaleidos flower punk palette this is part of their new spring collection that came out i mean presentation on this whole collection was just phenomenal i do believe you you can't get this right now they are gonna have a restock but here is what the packaging looks like and there's you can take this thing off um I don't know. I'm not a big fan of packaging like that though because I always accidentally jab an eyeshadow palette. But other than that, I mean, it's still very, very cute and I love this color story. Yes, it's very Melt-esque, but here's the thing. I've said this before, Melt and I have beef. Their eyeshadow palettes and I, 80% of the time, we don't get along. Um, I, I really like this formula, so I felt like this was a way for me to get some Melt's 
colors and inspiration without fighting with the formula. Now the formula on this is not impeccable. I feel like the shimmers in here aren't as good as what I'm normally used to from Kaleidos. Like these are lid toppers, a little bit messy, but nothing crazy. Just apply with a finger, a wet brush, or with some extra glitter glue and you'll be fine. Overall, I'm very happy with this palette. The mattes are really beautiful, but I love the color story of this the most. All of these colors are cohesive with one another, which is what I didn't like about the Natasha Denona palette. I feel like you throw these all on the eyelid and it creates such a unique look, but you can also stick to just one side to get something a little bit more cohesive as well. Great color story for this spring. One thing that I wish was different was there's only two lid toppers and then one regular shimmer. I wish... <laughs> I don't need two lid toppers, you know. I wish there was more of their shimmer formula because this is better. And there's a lot of great mattes, but I feel like, you know, you don't need both of these. You don't need both of these. So adding more shimmers, and this is just for my preferences, I would have preferred, but I know a lot of you probably do like mattes. So that's, again, just a personal thing, but I really have been enjoying this palette. Great palette for spring. Moving on to number four, this was in my monthly favorites. This is the other part of the Chanel collection, again from the Le Beige. This is the Intense. Now, this one is super duper boring, but I love it. Back to the point where I was saying I really am more of a neutral glam kind of girl. This is super neutral, super glam, a very sophisticated, sheer kind of formula that is quite easy to apply the way that I describe this is an effortless smoky eye. Now, you don't have to get a smoky eye with this palette, but I'm just saying you can get the most effortless smoky eye with this palette. Such an easy to grab for everyday palette when you aren't sure what you want to do with your look. You're just looking for something simple. I've really been enjoying this. So while it's not the most exciting palette, it's just one that I felt inclined to reach for because my makeup looks good no matter what, with this palette. I always love the way my eyes look. Um, now, that one is a bit pricey, for sure. I will admit that. Like, I don't think you need to run out and grab it, but if you are into the luxury experience and you value that, I think that's part of the reason also why I've been really enjoying it. So, overall, I just think it's a gorgeous palette. Let's move on to number three. Now, I didn't put this in my favorites because I'll be honest, I still have only used it one time, but I just feel so incredibly inspired by this palette and I just know I'm going to love it when I dig into the other colors and create more looks. This is the Shroud Cosmetics It's Freakin' Bats collection with Butte Bean. Well, I guess it's not a collection, it's just the eyeshadow palette. But look at these colors here. Now these colors are a bit out of my comfort zone here, but I want to play with this palette because I just love the colors that were chosen for here. So I've only used this once, like I said, but the one time that I use it, obsessed with the quality, obsessed with the look that I created. It's an indie brand, so I'm pretty sure the quality is going to continue to be amazing for the other looks that I create. There's a very chartreuse color here, which I used all over the lid for the look that I created. Obsessed. I just, I love everything about this palette. I can't wait to continue using it, and I will definitely share photos of the looks that I create furthermore. Now, the one thing that, oh my gosh, it's so hot now. It's so hot in this room. <laughs> Now, the one thing, obviously, that was not good about this palette was that it took six months to get to me. Indie brands, you know, that's the not-so-great thing, but I'm so happy that it's finally here and the quality is super-duper good. Okay, let's move on to number two. This is the palette that I'm currently wearing, and I used this palette specifically today because I'd only used it once, so I wanted to use it at least one more time to be able to rank this accurately. Coming into today, I was not going to rank this at number two, and then I did this look, and I'm like, this is definitely number two. I mean, this look is stunning. This is the Pat McGrath Labs Venus in Fleurs Luxe Quad Voyeuristic Vixen. This was the new eyeshadow palette that came out in Pat McGrath's Divine Blush Collection. And I will be honest, this is not my favorite quad from Pat McGrath, which is why I didn't expect it to land in second place. But dang, the looks that I've created. I've just, I've been so obsessed with both of them that it only seemed fitting to put them in number two. So, Pemograph has come out with a few other quads. I believe a couple came out in the 
holiday collection and I have a few others from previous collections as well. This is not my favorite quad from Pat McGrath, but every time I put it on I fall absolutely in love with the looks that I create. So this palette is awesome because there's this super unique duochrome shade in here that it is a bit flaky. If you don't like a little bit of a messy shadow, do be aware, you know, prep as necessary, but it's so stunning on the lid, the shift. So this was all over the lid on the first look that I created. So I did want to create another look today that didn't involve this shade, just so I can get a feel for the other shades. So I have this shade in the outer corner here for the depth. Such an easy shade to work with. Very great quality, easy to blend out. I do wish there was a more mid-tone shade, but when you have a quad, you're very, very limited, so it's fine. And then I went in with this shade. This is a shade that I hadn't used yet, so I wanted to give it some love, and that's right in the middle of my lid, and I am super in love with this shade as well. It's really beautiful and reflective. And then finally, I went in with this shade right here in the inner corner. I would say like the inner third of the lid to brighten up the look. So those are the three shades that I have on my eyelid. And surprisingly, the more that I've played with this and looked at it, you really can do more looks than it will seem. Now, of course, you have very, three very shimmery, reflective shades, and then you only have one matte. So this matte is gonna be the key piece in every single look here. Uh, but you can apply this in a multitude of ways. You can do a halo eye, you can do just a little bit in the outer corner, you can really kind of go ham with it everywhere, and then layer one of these two shades over top of it. You can just do a look with just these two. You can do a look with just these two. It actually is much more versatile than it seems. So first impressions of it, I really liked it. I thought that that duochrome shade was stunning. However, I was like, ah, it's just not the best from Pat McGrath though. I'm not super inspired by the color story. But when it's on the eyes, I cannot deny how beautiful it is. So that's why it is at number two. Okay, time for my number one favorite of this month. It was in my monthly favorites, and this is a more wearable palette, but that's the thing, like, I can't stop wearing it, so that is why it's in first place. This is the other Charlotte Tilbury Instant Look of Love palette. This is the blushed... No, Pretty Blushed Beauty is what it is called. And again, it's the same deal with the Glowing Beauty in that I just love the different formulations they put in here. There's three eyeshadows, one highlight, one cheek color, one bronzer, and then one just touch-up face powder, which is one of her most famous formulas, by the way, I like to add. So it truly is an all-in-one palette. And I'm in love with these shades. They're very simple, but they really brighten up the face and give you a very pretty blushed bridal kind of glow to the skin which is a look that I'm very into for every day. The quality is really great. I have nothing bad to say about this and I feel like these shades are all geared perfectly towards my personal skin tone so there isn't a shade in here that I don't absolutely love. I'd also like to mention that this shade right here, this glittery shade, is so eye-opening on the eyelid absolutely beautiful. So this is my number one favorite. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I love her instant looks in a palette, but I normally don't love them this much. Like, you should get it. I'm just saying, you should get it. <laughs> All right, you guys, there we have it. Those are all of the palettes that I tried in the month of May, ranked from worst to best. Let me know your thoughts on all of the palettes that I tried. Did you try any of these out? If you guys aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.